for those that are watching on the recording or now, um, the link that you want to go to is gogenai slash webinar. So uh, on my repo, gogenai slash webinar, and you can see some of that code here that we'll be getting through. Um, another good resource if you're interested is um, this API reference for Prediction Guard. Um, we have a number of uh, open models available, and uh, we just just released um, our official Go client. So let's let's get to it. I'm gonna switch over here now into my my code window, and the way that I've structured this repo is in three sections: one, accessing LLMs; two, prompt engineering; three, uh, chaining and augmentation. And obviously we're gonna start with one here, and then each of those includes a set of examples uh, for, um, uh, for, for how to do these things. So I'm gonna use the Go, uh, the Go client that I just mentioned for Prediction Guard, which allows you to connect to the Prediction Guard API, which has these models hosted already. Assuming you have a Prediction Guard key, you can access these models and, um, and, and try them out. If you noticed uh, here in my chat interface, the main thing that I'm doing is I'm giving a prompt to the large language model, and then I'm getting a completion because ultimately these models are big autocomplete models. And so I wanna do the same thing here. So the first set of examples we're gonna go through is just how to make these calls to a large language model and get output out the other end. Um, so in terms of how to access the models, you can run them locally, you can run them behind a closed API, or you can run them through a platform like Prediction Guard. Um, the thing is most of these require specialized hardware. If you're running them locally on your laptop, you're generally limited in terms of how much, how big of a model you could run. So here we're gonna use the models that are already hosted on predictionguard.com. And uh, the Go client, the way that you would call one of these is after setting up a, a logger and creating a new client. So from the Go client uh, with, a, with a timeout, then you can just define one of these models to call. In this case, I'm calling the Hermes 2 Pro Mistral 7B model. A lot of these models have crazy names, but that's one of them. Um, so calling this model and uh, on the client here, I'm just calling the completions uh, method here and giving it a prompt. So the way that this works is I define the model, then I give it a text prompt. And then if I want to, I can define a max tokens value and a temperature value. So this temperature value, if it's low, like 0.1 or something like that, then you get less variability in the output. If it's higher, you get more variability. This uh, max tokens will truncate your output. So remember, like when I when I'm here doing my completion, this sort of went on for a while. If I don't want my language model to just keep generating text for a while, I can actually force it to truncate at a certain number of tokens or words. So it's pretty simple. Define your define your client. Um, set up the completion or uh, call into completions with your prompt. And then we're just going to output um, the text out of that response. So here I go over to a terminal and go into our first example. I'm going to build that. Okay. And if I run that, then um, it's going to execute this request, and if you see, my prompt was the best thing about or the best thing about gophers is colon, and here they are smart. They don't bite. They don't carry disease. They're like little furry tractors that live underground and are great for composting. Wow, that's actually a really wonderful response. Although I do think that gophers bite. Um, and carry diseases actually. Um, so notice a couple of things about this response. Um, they, this response is kind of, uh, it seems to be truncated because I put that truncation in there. I, I manually terminated it because I knew it probably wouldn't be that great of an answer. Um, I manually truncated it 
Um, so you can see this just sort of cuts off here. Um, but also it seems to just like lose the, it, it just keeps going on and on. I, w I guess I wasn't very specific in what I asked it to generate, but generally this is on topic. Now, if I run this again, I'm not going to get the same thing. So I get something maybe similar, but not the same thing. I can run it again. I get something similar, not the same thing. Remember, I set up this parameter here, this temperature parameter to give some variability. But even if I set that low, I won't always get the same thing out of these models. So that's one first thing to keep in mind as you're, as you're working with these models.